G'day folks, thanks for tuning in. Today's video is one in a series on color theory, where we'll be exploring the color yellow. In these videos I like to keep a focused palette, both to make it easy to follow along and also show you that you don't need dozens of colors when painting with oils. Now you don't need these specific pigments to try this yourself, but for posterity I have out on the palette titanium white, brilliant yellow pale, Indian yellow, cadmium yellow hue, cadmium red deep hue, asphaltum, dioxazine purple, and indigo. I've gone with cadmium free yellow for this one, as I know a lot of folks might be nervous about using true cadmiums. While the cadmium free paints tend not to cover as well, I want to show that you can still get a good result with them, and you can find them in most starter sets. If you've been here before you'll know I'm a fan of this brilliant yellow pale by Williamsburg. I recommend it, or something like it, in any collection. An opaque pale yellow is a great tool for creating natural looking highlights, and its opacity will help us bolster our cadmium free yellow. At the other end of things I have this Indian Yellow, also by Williamsburg. This colour is very transparent, but also extremely potent. So far in this series we've been using very dark colours to lay our foundation, so I wanted to show you that it's not our only option. Now this particular paint is a bit of an outlier in how strong that it is, but if you're incorporating a lot of yellow into your projects, you may want to look into it. So we'll be taking our Space Marines here and building on three separate colours to get our yellow. Asphaltum, which is a dark reddish brown, Doxazine Purple, and that Indian Yellow. Let's get started. Like always we'll be starting out with our old Royal Langnickel size 8, but any cheap synthetic round brush will work for you here. The more beat up the better, as we're looking to get our foundational colours into every nook and cranny on our miniature. I've also got out a cap full of thinner, which we'll use to control the flow of paint. I use Mona Lisa Odorless Thinner by Speedball, which I recommend, but there are a lot of options out there, so find what works best for you. We're going to start with our Asphaltum which I'm mixing in with a bit of thinner first to make sure that it flows into all the recesses. We're just going to attack the mini here, and get it all over the parts we want to be yellow. Doesn't matter if a bit gets on the weapon or the base, the point by this stage is to lay a foundation, so we can have fun with it. Brown's a good foundation for yellow, as it's just a desaturated orange, which itself is just yellow and red. When we go to mix our yellow in, we don't have to worry about any surprises, and it should all look quite natural. Once we're done with this step, it's a good idea to wring out your brush on a paper towel, this will get the bulk of the paint off, which will make cleaning the brush easier, but you can also reuse the same brush if transitioning to a colour of similar value or hue without worrying too much about cross-contamination. For our second marine we'll be using purple, which again we'll be thinning down a bit before applying. And our third marine will get Indian yellow. Now purple may sound like an odd choice, but colour theory tells us that complementary colours, or colours opposite each other on the wheel, can be used to shade each other. Purple sits opposite yellow, and we'll see this in action shortly. The Indian yellow is a lot brighter, but still darker and less saturated than our true yellow, so it'll still work for us here. The drawback is that our shadows won't be as dramatic as the other two minis, but we can try to fix that by adding a bit of dark brown and applying it to the areas most in shadow. But as you can see, the Indian yellow is overpowering even that asphaltum as they mix. That's what I meant by potent, but we'll see how we go. For the bases we'll be using indigo, which is a dark desaturated blue. Blue is complementary to orange, and is a cool colour against the warm yellow, so it'll provide us with some good contrast. I need more thinner here as my basing material is more absorbent and textured than the rest of the mini, and I'm not concerned about getting it on the feet a bit, as it'll just help with integration later on. Indigo also makes a good foundation for gunmetal, so we'll be putting that on the bolt too. Again not caring if we get the hands, at this stage it's all about blocking our colours in. And there we are, an absolute mess, but bear with me. Next we'll be wiping most of this away, and using what's left to set up our yellow. To wipe it away we'll be using these makeup sponges, which you can get just about anywhere for cheap. I like these latex free ones, as they can be easily cut to size and don't crumble easily. I'm starting with the indigo sections, so more of the overspill will get wiped away when we do the rest. It's a good idea to use separate sponges for separate colours, unless you're looking to mix at this stage which can be a good option when working with more organic models. See how the bolter and the base already look painted? Just by glazing and wiping you can get a tabletop ready result in no time. Similar to contrast paint or speed paint, with the bonus of being able to choose the direction of your light source. Once these are done we grab a fresh sponge and make our way around the rest of the mini, wiping from top to bottom. This establishes our light source, and pre-shades the model for us. We want to remove as much paint as possible, while still having a roadmap for our highlights. Darker pigments tend to stain more effectively than lighter, so adjust the amount of pressure you use accordingly. Having said that, 
This is where this particular Indian yellow is an exception. You can't tell by the mini, but look at how much paint's coming off on the sponge. That asphaltum is getting obliterated by it, and only survives in the deepest recesses. You can see that even though the indigo is tinting the legs a little bit green, everything's still predominantly yellow. If you're coming from acrylics where yellow is one of the weaker and more challenging pigments to work with, then you might be as surprised as I first was. At any rate, getting all the excess paint off is going to help our subsequent layers adhere better, so it's not all in vain. A good thing too. You don't have to wear gloves when working with oils, but it sure can come in handy. And here they are all together. Next we'll be applying our initial yellow layer, and we'll see how much each of these colours shape that. You can get a bit of a sense of how transparent the cadmium free yellow is on the palette, particularly the student grade stuff. Now it's not a bad thing, and if you're coming from acrylics you'll still be impressed by how well it covers, but it will mean a slightly different approach than other colours. Since we'll need more overall, we want to apply it thinly. This means wiping the excess off on your paper towel, and coming in with light, gentle strokes. As we work from top to bottom, our foundation mixes in on the mini, creating a lot of our shading for us. You can already see the difference between the helmet and the pauldron. We can save a lot of time and effort by painting strategically like this. If things get too muddy, we can just go back for more paint from the palette. The brown foundation is giving us a nice golden yellow, so brown's always a safe bet, but let's see how the purple goes. Still yellow, albeit a bit more desaturated. This is due to the complementary colours cancelling each other out. When you add equal amounts you get grey, but since we've wiped most of the purple away, it shapes the yellow rather than overpowering it. The shadows are also a lot more dramatic, again due to that contrast to complements. Like red and green at Christmas, yellow and purple really do pop next to each other. Now if things get too brown, we can just come back in with more yellow. The type of yellow you're using and its opacity will determine how much is needed here, but be conservative. It's always easier to add than take away. At this stage I'm using a filbert brush, either a real one or a flat brush that I've trimmed the corners off. The filbert shape makes it easier to apply broad highlights like this, and it facilitates that blending on the mini. And now we've come to the Indian Yellow Marine. I'm not confident that our weaker cadmium yellow hue will keep up here, but we're going to give it a go. Same as before, mix it up, wipe off the excess, and start from the top. It's subtle, real subtle, and the camera isn't doing it any favours but it is doing something, and sometimes it's worth pressing on and seeing something through, as the effect might not be obvious at first. In this case it wasn't, but we're learning here. I'm skipping ahead and adding some brilliant yellow pale into my yellow, hoping that its opacity will give us that oomph that we need. Fortunately the Indian yellow isn't desaturating it too much, as it's just yellow on yellow, and the brilliant yellow pale is already pretty desaturated. Either way, it's going to be quite different from the other two. And then some. So technically we have yellow, but we've got a bit to go before we want a more familiar hue. But we can see just how different our same yellow looks over each foundation. We're going to give this layer a few minutes to set up a bit, and knock out the bases and the bulbs as next. As this video is about yellow, I won't spend too long here, but I like to do the bases and other major elements early on, as they give us much needed context when painting the rest of the armour. I mixed a bit of white into indigo, which makes a nice blue-grey and I'm just gently brushing it over the base. The brush will catch on the raised parts, doing our highlighting for us, and thanks to the working time of oils, it'll blend as it goes, meaning no chalky texture. For the bolters, I've mixed some brilliant yellow pale in instead. This still gives us a blue-grey, but with a slight greenish tint that separates it from the base, and also works well for metals. Once we've applied it, we can come in with the thin edge of the brush and drag it along the edges of the bolter, giving us some quick and easy edge highlights. So this step will be similar to our initial yellow. We're taking some yellow, adding a bit of brilliant yellow pale, and brushing it on. This time in a more targeted manner, focusing on the upper surfaces, and in a smaller area. I'm using a smaller, dedicated filbert brush for this, again for that extra control. Now it's starting to look a lot more yellow. The brilliant yellow pale does a lot of the heavy lifting here, thanks to its opacity, largely due to the white in it. You'll see on the few occasions when I actually have the model in frame, that I'm being mindful of the shapes here. Highlighting the cylinders of the legs, the spheres of the pauldrons in the backpack, and all those square edges accordingly. By this stage you'll have noticed how streaky everything is. We could fix that easily though with a clean dry round brush. 
I prefer Sables for this due to their softness, but synthetics will work too. Here we gently tap the side of the brush to scumble that paint in. We're not technically brushing, as that'll just pull the paint around and exacerbate the marks. Instead we're blending, and you can see these transitions start to melt together. Now it's important to keep your blending brush clean and dry, so you want to wring it out on a paper towel or between your fingers periodically, or have a few spares on hand. This step is one of the more rewarding, and it reminds me that every paint job has an ugly phase that's worth sticking through. And take your time here, but remember that more layers are coming, so it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to get a sense of our progress. Now we're applying the same highlight to our purple marine. It's definitely looking more desaturated on this one, but that may be the look you're going for. But if we do go too far, we can always come back in with more yellow, or wait until everything's dried and just apply a pure yellow glaze. There are always options with oils, so have fun experimenting. I'm focusing more on the blending brush here than on our last marine, as we've already got them to a higher value than the others, and that Indian yellow does streak a lot more than the other colours, because it's so transparent. Now we've got some highlights down, let's re-establish some shadows. We're going to try the asphalt them again, as I don't want to shift too far from the original intent, remembering that less is usually more. Knowing more about how it behaves, we're just going to jam it on there, and use our blending brush to clean it up. Conversely, we're going to be more targeted with our shadows on the other marines. Using that foundational colour and a smaller round brush, we're going to paint in the shadows where they make sense, under the knee pad, inside the legs, and so on. In both cases, we'll be using the blending brush to smooth out the transitions, scumbling those areas together. Gradually, it all starts coming together, more subtly on the left and dramatically on the right, but we still have the recesses to deal with, so let's do those next. We're going to be using pin line washes to get into our recesses. That's just a heavily thin paint, in this case our foundational colour, applied with a small fine brush like this liner. We want enough thinner so that our paint will flow into the recesses, but not so much that it floods and we lose control. As always, less is more, so just test the tip of your brush against a spot, like one of the many panels in the armour. Capillary action should draw the paint in. If it doesn't, then you need more thinner. Now if you do use too much, don't panic, as it'll mostly evaporate out on the surface, and any residual can be blended back in with our blending brush, which you'll see me do here in a little bit. This technique allows us to get at the recesses and joins without destroying our highlighting, and really brings a lot of drama back into a mini painted and brighter colours, like these. You can see that our yellow is starting to look more yellow, as the value and colour contrast of the wash makes our yellow pop. Pin line washes are a great technique that I recommend you try, regardless of how you approach the rest of your painting. Now let these guys sit out for about 20 minutes or so, and our washes have settled a lot already. Most of that overspill has evaporated off, and now we can come back in with our blending brush and scumble away all that's left. I recommend waiting a bit before this step, as if there's too much thinner on the surface, then your scumbling will effectively erase instead, but even then, it's nothing that can't be fixed. So we go around picking out those spots and letting them out. Now if you like to weather your minis, you could intentionally apply patches of a wash to create that streaking and grime effect, but we're not going to be doing that here. From here we'll be hitting the remaining details to further enhance our yellow, like the weapons, the pouches and the trim. So while there's still work to do on the yellow, it's at this stage I like to tackle the rest of the details in order to lock in our context. I find doing the whole mini in progressive stages like this helps keep things together, and saves a lot of time in the long run. I'm going to paint the cabling and the undersuit in black, and the trim and the chest eagle in red. I personally prefer black for those elements too, as 5th company is the best company, but 3rd company are the poster boys, and adding some red will give some interest. And black is a straightforward mix of indigo and asphaltum. Remember that any complementary colours will mix to grey, and making a chromatic black like this is more visually interesting than using black straight from a tube. Straight black also tends towards green when mixed with yellow, so by making our own we can control how black it reads. We'll also be painting the leathers in black, but with a different technique to distinguish them. A bit of white into our black brings it up to grey, and as you can see it's a warmer grey. This just means I used more brown than blue, so if you want it to look cooler, just lean the other way. And we go around as before, just picking out the raised surfaces and letting the oils blend for us. 
Now, if you find that the paint isn't sticking, add a bit more thinner to it. If it's still not sticking, try going thicker instead. For the leathers, I'm applying a very rough edge highlight, not caring if some gets on the flat of the pouch. We can jump quite a bit in value here, as leather is usually either reflective or well-worn. Both give a strong contrast and value. Now, as oils are so glossy during application, it can be a bit easy to doubt the result, but stick with it. We blocked in the weapons earlier, but they could stand to be tidied up. We can come back in with a bit of indigo, and like with the armour, blot and blend some shadows in. It doesn't take all that much to get a non-metallic metal effect with oils, and they're great for practicing that and other advanced techniques. For the trim we're just going to jump right in with our red, or we will once I clean my brush out. There we go. I'm mixing asphaltum to darken it down, but you could also use purple or indigo if you wanted a slightly different kind of red. Now this darker red will be less bothered by the yellow than what's already on the mini. Instead as we apply it, that yellow will bring it back towards a truer red by way of orange. Using a thicker application here will help with coverage, and the fewer strokes we use the less blending will occur. Using the side of the brush for the trim where we can will make accidents less likely, but remember we can just blend them out if they do happen. Now we come in with our pure red, focusing on the upward facing edges. We also want to catch the edges of that chest eagle, and the eagles on the boulders. You've got a few options for the final highlight. White and brilliant yellow pale will steer you towards pink, and yellow towards orange. Adding white to a yellow mix will give you more of a peach instead. I've opted for pink here to help it stand out more against the yellow, but all are valid options. We use the same method for the eyes, just with a finer brush, like the liner we used for the pin line washers. Dark red over the whole lens, red towards the front, and our final highlight at the very front. We're just dotting it on here, and I'm also using this tiny brush to touch up the eagles when I can get the focus right. Then we come in with a dot of pure white on the back of each lens to get that reflection. worth coming in afterwards with a pin line wash, as the eagles and trim have some strong edges that a wash will really enhance. And like always, we can blend away our mistakes. And here they all are, really coming together now. And we're really getting a sense of the different kind of yellow we can achieve. But let's see if we can push it a little bit more. In this step, I always like to revisit colour theory, and give us some more options for our final highlights. If we mix some purple into our brilliant yellow pale, we get an even more desaturated purple, which is almost grey. I feel like the yellow on the brown marine is the most saturated so far, so a desaturated final highlight will bring a bit of balance into it. Here we're focusing on the uppermost points and edges, again using our liner brush. You can see the stark contrast in value and saturation, and it looks a bit jarring, but our blending brush will set things right. You could block and blend as you go at this stage, but if you know what colour you want, it's much faster to trust the process, do all your blocking, then come back and blend it all at the end. Now for our purple marine, I've got brilliant yellow pale with just a touch of yellow, as I want saturated highlights to make up for our desaturated midtones. You're still looking quite mustard, so this will help with that. If you prefer your minis to have that grim dark look, Using complementary shadows is also a good way to achieve it. Our Indian Yellow Marine has more white mixed in instead, as its overall value was higher than the others, so we need our final highlights to pop. The process is the same for all three though. Paint, then blend, going back and forth until you're at a place you're happy with. Now, I've got to admit that this one was a bit more challenging than I expected, as while most of the student grade paints are perfectly serviceable, the Winton Yellow did struggle with coverage, especially against that dominant Indian Yellow. Still, this series is a bad exploration, and I want to use these paints as most people will have access to them. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a comparison between cadmium and non-cadmium yellows in the future. And here's our final result. Three different yellows using the same yellow paint over different foundations. I 
hope this has been helpful and will encourage you to try out mixing your own colours, whether it's with oil paint or acrylic. And let me know in the comments which of the three is your favourite. I'm leaning towards the brown marine myself. Thank you very much for spending time with me here today. If you have any questions about any of the products or techniques I've talked about, or have a topic you'd like me to cover in a future video, I'd love to hear it. And again, thanks very much for being here, and take care.